What is up, Stretch Effect family? My name is Coach Luke, and I will be bringing you your Kin Stretch class today. For those of you who may be new to Kin Stretch or have never been exposed to Kin Stretch before, Kin Stretch is basically a movement enhancement system that allows us to improve range of motion, improve flexibility, and overall just gain a better understanding of our body and our body control. So we will be using um, practices today called CARS, which are controlled articular rotations, which pretty much just means controlled joint rotations. So for example, this is a shoulder car. We will be doing stuff like called pails and rails, which stands for progressive angular isometric loading and regressive angular isometric loading. That's not anything you need to worry about right now, but we will explain more as we go through the class. Um, we will be really focusing on mobility along with flexibility. So we'll be stretching, we'll be getting into positions of longer muscle length, but then we'll all be working on mobility, which is the strength and the usable control of those ranges of motion. So as we go through the class, I will be explaining everything that we're doing. I will be really going through in detail um, with what we'll be training today, which will be our hips. So with the hips, it really comes down to rotation. So we have what's called internal hip rotation and external hip rotation, which really creates the foundation for everything that we're gonna do with our body. So for example, if we wanna improve our hip flexion by improving our hip internal external rotation, We'll, be, we'll allow our joints to be in a better position to move, to, to control, and then it will help eliminate any painful pinches or anything that could restrict the movement that we're going through. So the way our class will kind of break down today, we'll be going through CARS, which is our control articular rotations. We'll be focusing mainly on the neck, the shoulder, and the hips. And then we'll get into what's called capsule CARS, and then we'll get, really get into the nitty gritty of our hip training. So like I said today, it's all gonna be hip focused and then we're really gonna get into the kind of the finer details of what allow us to expand our hip range of motion, but then our control in those ranges of motion. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start with neck cars. So we're gonna start in what's called a collapsed kneeling position. So I'm just gonna sit on my feet. If you can't do that, we can always get into what's called tall kneeling, which is just an elevated position where we're squeezing our glutes and keeping our body in a nice straight line. But for now, we'll just drop into collapsed kneeling. We're just sitting on the feet, and then we're just gonna take our hands and lock down, then punch down towards the floor, lock your shoulders in place. And then we're gonna start by flexing one vertebra at our time, our chin to our chest. We're gonna slowly rotate to our right. So rotate chin to the collarbone. Take your collarbone and peek over the shoulder and drop the ear over. Look to the sky as we extend. Drop your ear over the other shoulder, chin to the left collarbone, and rotate back through the center. That's one rep. We're gonna do one more on that side. So then chin to the collarbone as we rotate nice and slow, take one mile per hour. Drop the ear over the shoulder, rotate chin to the sky, keep those shoulders down, keep punching down towards the floor. Ear over the other shoulder, like we're pouring water out the ear. Drop your chin to the collarbone, and then rotate through the center. So that was two neck cars to the right, and then we'll do two neck cars to the left. So we'll pull the chin down to the collarbone, take one vertebra at a time, tension check through the core, make sure we're nice and tight through the torso. Take our chin to the collarbone, peek over the shoulder like you're looking over your blind spot, drop your ear over the shoulder, rotate chin to the sky, ear over the other shoulder, chin to the collarbone, and rotate through the center. Let's do one more. It's slower the better here. We want to eliminate any extra motion, make sure all of it is coming from the neck. Chin to the collarbone, peek over the shoulder, drop the ear, rotate chin to the sky, ear over the other shoulder, drop the chin to the collarbone, and rotate back through the center. So that's two neck cars. We're gonna go into two shoulder cars now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take one arm, we're just gonna grab the ribcage just to make sure we're nice and engaged and we're not extending through the ribcage as we go through our shoulder motion. So just think nice and engaged to the core, squeeze the legs, keep everything engaged. We'll take our left arm, we're gonna take the arm forward and then rotate, externally rotate out to the side. We're gonna cross the body, it's called adduction keeping the palm high, we're gonna cross the midline of the body, think scrape the eyebrows, scrape the ear, 
with your bicep. Once you get to the top and you can't flex anymore, we're gonna rotate our hand out. Keep turning that arm over. Imagine you have an X on your bicep and we're just trying to max out that rotation as I come over the top and through. I'll pause there and I'm gonna think, keep the thumb back as I kick my thumb to the sky. It's called extension as I come over the top. I'm rotating that arm as much as I can, try not to shrug up for as I'm trying to my shoulder in the capsule as I rotate across the eye, across the body, palm comes high in what's called supination, and I rotate back through the center. Okay, we need one more rep there. This hand just makes sure that the torso stays locked in, ribs stay down, everything else throughout the body is engaged to so make sure that only the shoulder is rotating. So palm faces out across the body, palm comes high, over the top, scrape the ear, scrape the eyebrow as I now start to rotate my arm as much as I can. So I'm maxing out, it's called axial rotation. While I'm maxing out rotation of the shoulder, come down, back my hand touches, and now I reverse, thumb goes to the sky, rotate over the top, Cross the eye, cross the ear, palm rotates up, cross the midline of the body, rotate back to the center. Okay, I'm just gonna switch sides. So I'm gonna take my right arm, I'm gonna rotate out. Left hand comes to the rib cage, just to remind me to stay tight to my torso. I'm gonna cross the midline of my body, palm comes up, cross my face, cross my eyebrow, cross my ear. Once I can't get any more flexion, then I start to rotate that bicep over the top, as much rotation here as I can, while I max out rotation of the shoulder, and I come to the bottom. So my thumb will be facing back now as I reverse into extension. Can't get any more here. I will rotate my arm over the top, making sure my torso stays tight. I'm gonna cross my ear, cross my eyebrow, Cross the midline of my body with my palm up. Come down, back to my starting position, and reset. So make sure that tension through here, tension through my torso, tension through my legs. Nothing else is moving except the shoulder as I finish my second rep here. So I'm gonna cross the midline of the body. Supination position, that means my palm is up. Cross the eye, cross the eyebrow, cross the ear. Rotate my arm and shoulder as much as I possibly can without anything else going along for the ride. Come down to the center. Okay, and then reverse. So I'm gonna reverse. Thumb comes high into extension. Once I can't get any more here, I will begin to rotate my palm and my arm over the top. As I cross the ear, cross the eyebrow, I begin to supinate. So I bring my palm up, kind of like I'm holding a bowl of soup. It's a good way to remember it. Cross the body come down to my starting position. So it's two neck cars, two shoulder cars. We're gonna finish off today's cars with two quadruped hip cars. Quadruped just means I would be in a quadruped position, meaning I will have my shoulders over my hands, I will have my hips over my knees, one good 90 degree bend of the hip and a 90 degree bend of the knee. I will be focusing on one hip at a time as I go through this, as I go through these motions here. So I will take my right leg, and I will make sure my core is engaged. Nothing else is gonna move as I work through these cars here. I will pull my right knee up towards my right elbow. I'll pause. Make sure everything's locked out, elbows locked out, pressing away from the floor. Take my knee out to the side as much as I can. It's called abduction. Rotate palm or foot to the ceiling. As I come over the top and through. I will reverse, I will go heel to the sky, so I'll make sure I drive my heel to the sky without arching my lower back too much, right? A little bit's okay, we just wanna make sure we're not sacrificing hip motion for lower back motion. So I'm engaged to the core, I drive my heel to the sky, and it comes out to the side, over the top, and through. So one more rep there, so re-engage through the core. Make sure the elbows are locked out. Make sure we're not bending the elbows. We're doing our right hip car. 
your left elbow is going to want to bend. So really make sure you're pressing away from the floor, elbows are locked out, core is engaged, and we're getting all that motion through this hip. So I'm going to pull right knee to right elbow, right knee comes out to the side. As I rotate my heel to the sky, I'm looking over the top, heel drives up, over, and through back to my start position. Then I reverse. Heel will drive up to the ceiling. Knee drives out to the side. Up around. Back to my start position. So that's two hip cars on the right. Flip around so you guys can see. I'm going to go two hip cars on the left. So I'll be core engaged. Elbows locked out. Get a 90 degree bend in my hips, 90 degree bend in my knees. Shoulders are stacked over my hands. Hips are stacked over my knees. Take my left hip, left knee, pull up to the left elbow. I'm going to drive out to the side, so like, like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. Heel rotates up to the sky, around over the top, and through back to my start position. Now reverse, heel drives to the sky, knee rotates out to the side, over the top, nice, controlled, and then through. One more, knee drives to the elbow, knee out to the side, heel rotates up to the sky, control every other part of your body, feed it through, tension check, make sure you're locked in, heel drives to the sky, knee out to the side as you rotate over, and through. So that was two hip cars for our neck, our shoulder, and our hips. We have cars for the rest of our body, but for the sake of today's class, we're really focusing on the, the neck, hips, shoulders, primarily the hips. So I always tell everybody, if you have one thing that you could do the rest of your life, cars would be it. Whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's before you train, whether it's a superset in your training, whether it's a post-workout cool down, before bed routine, the more cars you can get throughout your day, the better. It's a great movement enhancement practice, but it's also a great body control practice where you learn to control range of motions that you have. Okay, so we're gonna get into our hip positions here. So we're gonna focus on what's called 90-90. So 90-90 position simply means that we have a 90 degree bend of our front knee and a 90 degree bend of our back knee. So in this position, we will be focusing on what's called external rotation of the front hip and then internal rotation of the back hip. So if we look at our cars, as we go through our cars here, internal rotation would be this position here. And as we come back over the top, external rotation would be this position here. So I know it seems kind of confusing, but internal rotation is actually the rotation of the femur. So even though my foot's going out, I'm internally rotating the femur. And as I go, foot goes in, I'm externally rotating the femur. So as we go through these positions here, I'll be referring to them as internal, external rotation and internal rotation, and I'll just be clarifying them throughout, week, throughout, throughout the course and throughout the classes. So I'll begin the 90-90 position, okay? So I'm gonna focus on the front hip stretch. So this is external rotation stretch. As I work into this position here, I wanna think I have a string pulling my belly button up and forward, and I have a string pulling my back hip back and up. So what you'll see a lot of times is people just come fall into these positions here. And that's although that it may get through a stretch on the superficial tissue, what we're going for is that capsule stretch. So the deep hip stuff that we kind of use to function, whether we're squatting, running, walking, going upstairs, the best, that, best, the best way that we can access that tissue is to get a deep capsule stretch. So to do that, we want to think chest over the front knee, over the front knee. I want to take a lift my chest. I want to think, stick my butt out behind me. And I want to pull myself deeper into that stretch, not by folding down, but by thinking I'm trying to take my belly button out over my front leg. So in this position here, I should feel a deep stretch on the tissue that's uh, laying on the floor here. As I do so, I'm just going to breathe. So think four second inhale, eight second exhale. Right, so I think belly breathing here. So this is a good time to practice our belly breathing, which we should all be doing anyway. Right, so think four second inhale. 
Eight second exhale, twice as slow on the exhale. And with each exhale, we want to find ourselves, drive deeper, deeper into that stretch. Again, not by folding forward, but by leaning out, lifting that tailbone, and trying to take that belly button out over that front leg. Okay, from here, we're just going to hold this stretch for about two minutes. I'll start my clock. And we just really want to focus on getting deeper and deeper into that stretch with each breath. So a four second inhale. Eight second exhale. Pour yourself deeper in the stretch, trying to lift the tailbone, trying to get that belly button out over that front knee. Feeling a good deep stretch on the tissue that's laying on the floor. So while we hold this stretch, I'll explain our pails and rails process. So pails and rails is actually how we expand the range of motions that we're working into. So the stretch is great and the stretch helps us increase stretch tolerance, but pails and rails is actually how we build ownership and control and actually increase our range of motion and improve our hip internal external rotation. So the pails and rails process is we'll be holding the two minutes, which we should be doing right now, focusing on breathing, getting nice and deep into that stretch. The pails, which is the progressive angular asymmetric loading, means that we're going to be increasing this angle. So even though the floor is right here, and you're not really going to actually increase the angle, we're working to drive our foot and ankle down into the floor as if we were doing this, increasing the angle between our hip and our torso. Okay, so that is our pail. So what we'll do when I, when I tell you to, we're gonna start slowly. So if we're gonna build up the contraction of driving our foot and ankle into the floor for about five to 10 seconds. So that would be like 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, and then we'll do 100% maximum effort driving that foot and ankle into the ground for about another 10 seconds, okay? And then immediately after that 15 to 20 second time is up, we're gonna do our rails, which our rails is regressive angular isometric loading, which means we're regressing the angle between our torso and our leg. So that would be like lifting the leg from the floor. Although we are at our end range, so you're not gonna really be able to lift the foot off the floor. And if you can, that really just means you're not at your end range. So for instance, I'm not in the end range of this position and I can still get my foot off the ground. But if I'm deep in this position here, deep in the stretch, there's no way for me to lift that foot. I can move my ankle, but I'm not moving from the hip. Okay, so just a quick reminder, our pails, we build up the contraction slowly over about five to 10 seconds, and we'll hold that max effort for about another 10 seconds, driving foot and ankle into the floor. And then our rails, we go right into it to get quick contraction as we drive our knee into the ground, and then we imagine we're trying to lift our foot and ankle off of the floor. This is all while holding at that end range position. So let's check our time. Good, so we're a little bit over, that's good. You can really hold that stretch for the longer the better, really. So think, take a breath in, brace that core, and then start driving that foot and ankle into the floor for that first pills contraction. So for the first five seconds, the other should be about 80%. Let's go 100% max effort, drive that foot and ankle into the ground for 10 seconds here. Drive down, drive down, five, four, three, two, one, and rails, crush the knee down, try to lift that foot, pull yourself deeper in that stretch, and lift that tailbone even more, drive down into it, drive down into it even more, even more. Let's go for five seconds, trying to lift that foot, drive that knee into the floor, three, two, one, and relax. You should be able to get a little bit deeper into that stretch now. So now we pretty much just hold our nervous system. This is the stretch position, and this is how we can strengthen inside of it. So after you've done your pails and rails, your body will grant you a little bit more range of motion because it's pretty much telling you it feels safe in that position. So what we'll do from here, we're just gonna do one round of pails and rails today as we kind of just get familiar with it. And now we're gonna work on improving the control of what we have in that range of motion. So what we're gonna do is you'll lie on your side. So you're gonna keep that front knee forward. You're gonna lay, it's called a side lying 90-90. So we're gonna take our top leg straight and we'll have our bottom leg at 90 degrees, okay? So what we'll do is what's called passive range holds for external rotation. So the pails and rails we just did, right? The rails was trying to lift that foot into more external rotation. 
So a passive range holds is really how we tell our body, this is, a, this is the range of motion we have, and this is how we control it. So I'll start my clock, we'll get set up. What we're gonna do is grab your foot and grab your ankle, keep your body nice and relaxed for now. You're gonna pull up, keep your knee on the floor to as much external rotation as you have. Right, so I don't wanna do so much that the rest of my body changes, but I wanna to relax to make sure that I can get into that external rotation position. What we're gonna do is called a passive range hold. So we're gonna do five rounds of five second holds. So when I tell you, you're gonna brace your core, drive your knee into the floor, you're gonna release the foot, and you're gonna to try to hold that position there without letting your foot drop at all. It may drop a little bit, and that's okay, and that just shows you the difference between your passive range, so that's the position I can pull into, and then my active range, which is the position that I can actively drive up into. So you see for here, for me, for instance, this is my active range, and this is my passive range. We want to always be around 10 to 15 degrees difference. Anything outside of a 10 to 15 degree difference from active and passive range can be susceptible to injury. You're always gonna have more passive range than active range, and that's okay. But really what we're trying to do is bridge that gap and bring them as close together as we possibly can to make sure that your joints are healthy, making sure that you're in the best possible positions when you do your squats, when you do your training, whatever it is that you like to do. Right, so let's get in this position. So elbow will be right under the shoulder, knee will be straight out to the side, front knee is at 90 degrees, and I'm gonna pull up into my passive range. Okay, so find that stretch. We're gonna take a breath in, brace that core, and release and hold. Good, we're holding for five seconds. Keep trying to drive that foot higher, get more, and grab that foot. That's one rep. We got four more there. And brace and release and hold. Keep trying to drive the knee to the floor, lift that foot, grab that foot. That is two. Very nice. And brace and release and hold. And grab the foot, that is three. We got two more, okay? So just recover for about five seconds. Brace and release. Hold for five seconds. And grab the foot. Last one here, that is four. We got one more here. Brace and release. Grab the knee on the floor, try to rotate that foot higher. And slowly parachute that foot down to the floor. And relax. So that was one set of pails and rails, and then one set of passive range holds with the right hip for extra rotation. We're gonna to switch to the left hip now. So we have 90-90. So that's, again, 90 degree bend of the back knee, 90 degree bend of the front knee. And we will start the clock. And start to stretch on the front, on the left hip now. So I'm thinking lift the chest, lift the belly button, and then pull my back hip back and up. Right, so I want to always be trying to get deeper into that range. Again, not by folding forward, right? But by sticking the butt out, lifting that chest, and trying to find as much tension on the hip that is down on the floor. So I'll stay in this position for about another minute and a half. Again, the more time you spend in these stretches, the better. Two minutes is usually the time that we want to start with for our pails and rails. But you can hold that position for three minutes, five minutes, even 10 minutes if you have that mental fortitude and patience, a lot of us don't. Two minutes is more than most people do anyway, so it's always just trying to increase that amount of time that we spend in that stretch position, but always finish the little pails and rails just to tell our body, okay, we are in this position, now we're gonna strengthen in it, so over time, we start to improve that range of motion, improve that control at those extended ranges of motion. Okay, so let's go for another minute here. So we're just making the chest over that knee, trying to stick belly button up and forward, tailbone is back and up, okay? This is like nice and tall. If this position is uncomfortable for you, you can use blocks. So you can use blocks for your hands here and just to help you support. You can lean out a little bit to the side if that's more comfortable. If you're getting a kind of a crampy feeling in this back hip here or pain in the knee, you can always kind of change the position, whatever feels most comfortable. Okay, so we'll go for another 30 seconds. Just want you to keep belly breathing. Think. Increase. The expansion on the inhale, and then about an eight to 10 second exhale as we relax. Every time we blow out the exhale, we want to try to find ourselves deeper into that range of motion. Okay, so we go on 10 seconds here. So we can use the arms for stability, arms for support. Take a breath in, embrace that core, and then start driving that foot and ankle into the floor 
for that tail's contraction. If we're building it up, we're building it up, build up, we're at 50%, about 70, 90, go 100% back there to grab that foot, angle in the floor, but yeah, we're gonna hold for five, four, three, two, one, and rails across the knee of the floor, try to lift that foot while simultaneously pulling yourself deeper into that stretch. See how deep you can get into it. Drive down, drive down with that knee, pull yourself deeper into the stretch. We're going for three, two, one, and relax. Your body will give you a little bit more range of motion. Now that you've kind of shown that it can still contract and still actually use the muscle in that position. Okay, so take a breath there. And we're gonna hold, we're gonna drop down to our left side. So you'd be on your left elbow here. Left knee is at 90 degrees. Right leg or top leg is straight out from the body. This will give us a little bit more support. If this is super easy for you, you can always take this back into 90 degrees. This will just make it a little bit more challenging so you have maybe less leverage, right? But for now, top leg will be straight. Bottom leg's at 90. Elbow is under the shoulder. I kind of like doing a side point position, right? So instead of just pulling down right here, we want to take a lift at rib cage, right? So you can even take a block slide it under your ribcage just to remind you to not let yourself fall down, right? We don't want to rest on the block. We want to try to keep that ribcage off of the block and elevate it, okay? What we're going to do is our passive range hold. So we're going to do five reps of five second holds, okay? So you're going to pull it up into that passive range. Get that position so you relax as you pull into it. And then we brace and lift the torso, lift the ribcage off that block if you're using it and release. Go ahead, we'll hold for five seconds. And grab that foot again. Pull up, back in that passive range. When you're ready, take a breath in, brace, and release. We're gonna hold for five seconds here. Good, here we go. Three, two, one. Grab the foot, that's two reps. Three more here, so we're crushing that knee to the floor. Top leg drives down on the ground. Brace that core, and release. Five, four, Three, two, one, that is three. Two more here, give me everything you got. Crush that knee to the ground, lift that foot, and release. Good, five, four, three, two, one. Last one here, give me everything you got. Okay, lift the rib cage off the ground, drop the knee to the floor, release that foot, and hold. Good, five seconds, here we go. Brace, turn, lift that rib cage. Squeeze more, drive down, rotate that foot up, and slowly parachute down. Very nice. So that was hip external rotation. Okay, so now we're going to get into 90-90 again with the front leg forward, but now we're going to focus on what's called internal rotation. So although we start with external rotation, that's usually the easier one for people to kind of conceptualize. Internal rotation is really the kind of the foundation of all of our motions, whether it's hip internal rotation or shoulder internal rotation. Internal rotation kind of creates a foundation for everything else, everything else that we do. So if you want to have better hip flexion, so pulling you up, or better hip extension, grabbing your hip back. Hip internal rotation is not only the foundation for those movements, but it's also the first one to go, whether we, when we have degenerative changes, when we age or in inactivity. Right, so really what we need to focus on, ideally on a daily basis, would be improving our hip internal, the shoulder internal rotation. We improve those, everything else will improve. Right, so we get into the 90-90 position, pull our right knee forward, and we're gonna take our hand to the left hand on the left hip, and we're just gonna open up that hip, and close back down. So we're just think rotate our pelvis over a fixed beam. So this just kind of helps introduce our body to what internal rotation actually is. And it kind of helps prime the tissue for everything that we're about to do for it. So we're just gonna do two more. So open up and then close. Last one here. We're gonna open that hip up as much as we possibly can. Like I'm trying to take my left sit bone, my left butt cheek, closer to the floor, right? So this would be closing. We're gonna open that up and do as much internal rotation as we can, and then we're gonna hang out in this stretch two minutes, just like we did for an external rotation. So if you have any pain in the knee here, you can do a couple different things, right? So you can move the position of your knee. So sometimes people feel better here, sometimes people feel better with it more up. 
What most people will feel better with is to lean back more. So we can be up in this position here in intro rotation to get the stretch as we open up. But a lot of times people don't have what's called the abduction range of motion, which is lifting their leg to the side. So we need to lean back, kind of clear up some space, let the energy flow through that hip. And then we're just gonna keep trying to, as we breathe, rotate the hip towards the floor. So we're gonna hang out here for two minutes. So we're just gonna breathe, just like we did for the external rotation, focus on belly breathing, focus on getting as deep into this internal range of motion that we possibly can. So we're gonna lean back more. You just need to make sure we're rotating through the pelvis and then not just pulling on the shoulders to pull ourselves deeper into the stretch, right? So you should feel a good stretch on the underside of the hip, maybe down through the inside of the inside of the leg here. Um, so a quick review, we're gonna go through our pails and rails. Just like extra rotation will be one set. So pails is driving my foot and ankle down into the floor. So I'm thinking crushing that we do this motion here, right? So I'm crushing foot and ankle down. I build that up over the first five, 10 seconds. And then we do a max effort drive for 10, 10 seconds, okay? And then our rails is crushing my knee to the floor and I'm trying to lift my foot. You're not gonna be able to show your end range, but it will look kind of like that motion there. Okay, so it's, we're gonna go for another 45 seconds. Just stay deep in that stretch position, okay? Pails, 15, 20 seconds. And then a rails, which is a 15 second drive down and then you're trying to lift that foot. Again, if you can get your foot off the floor, that simply just means you're not at your end range, which is not a bad thing. You're still training that position, you're still training that hip. But for the sake of today's class, we want to be training our end range strength, end range from body control, right? So you open up as much as you can, get deep in that stretch as possible. I'll be in this position for a second. Check my clock, we go 15 seconds here. So then brace that course, just continue to try to pull deeper into that range of motion. We're gonna start that contraction in five seconds. Take a breath in, half the air down, start to drive that foot and ankle down into the floor. So we're crushing down, build it up. We're about 50%, 60%, 70. So max effort for 10 seconds, driving that foot and ankle into the floor as hard as we can. Good, five, four, three, two, one, and rails, try to drive the knee to the floor with that foot. You should feel a good contraction, good stretch here. If it cramps, that's totally okay. That just means we're in uncharted territory for us, and that's totally cool, that's what we want. Five, four, three, two, try to lift that foot, and then as we relax, sink deeper into that range of motion. Gosh, with a good hip step going, if you need to kind of Stretch it out, take it out of position. If you cramp up, you can kind of punch the hip. Kind of helps things feel better. Or we can go back into those rotations that we did to start this position. Okay? So that was internal rotation. So I've done rotating pails and rails. That's crushing the foot down on the pails, knee down on the rails. Okay? So now, just like we did passive range hold for external rotation, because internal rotation makes it a little bit more challenging to do passive range holds. We're gonna do what's called passive range liftoffs. So we want to think rotate back over the front hip, just like we did our external rotation, and then be working on driving our knee to the floor and lifting off with our foot and ankle off the ground. Okay, so that's called passive range liftoff. This is the passive range hold, where we hold in the passive range. This is the passive range liftoff, where we find our passive range and we work on lifting that foot off the ground. Okay, so we're gonna do five seconds or five holds. Five liftoffs, I should say, sorry, with a five second hold at each position. Okay, so think, get as far forward and out to the side as you need. The farther forward I lean, the easier it's going to lift that foot. So we want to get to where we're about four to six inches off the ground with that foot. So for me, I'll be about right here. I can drive my knee to the floor and I can rotate that foot up without letting my whole body change position. Okay, so find that position that you need, take a couple practice reps. We're going to do five liftoffs with a five second hold. Okay? So we can find the position and you want to make your upper body like a statue. Lock that body in place. Drive the knee to the floor and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly back down. That's one. Four more there. Knee to the floor, brace the core. Drive the foot up. Five, four, three, two, one. That's two. Three more here. Find the position you gotta be in, 
lock the torso in place, drive the knee in the ground, and lift five, four, three, two, one. That is three. Two more here. Ready? Knee in the floor. Lift five, four, three, five for more, five for more, and down slow. That's four. And the last one here. Make the best one yet. If you're getting higher than about six inches, just bring your body up a little bit taller, and you make it significantly more challenging. Okay, so find wherever you got to be. We're going to drive the knee to the ground and lift. Five, four, five for more, five for more, three, two, one, and down slow and relax. Okay, so what we're going to do from this position as we transition into our 90 90 on the other side is we're going to do what's called a slow transfer through our bear position. Okay, so bear sit is what we'll get into kind of halfway through this transition and this will kind of be a position that we'll train from in future classes. Okay, so what I want to think, chest is tall like I did my external rotation stretch with tails and rails, except for now I'm going to transition to 90 90 on the other side. So I have my hands on the floor, get a good stable base, I'm going to drive my foot, my big toe, my back leg into the floor and lift this heel. As I lift this heel, that's going to give me space to rotate through this hip, right? So I'm driving my big toe into the floor, with my knee off the ground as much as I possibly can and hold. From there, I'm going to rotate my torso so it faces my front heel. That will give me a little bit more space to open up that hip even more. Okay, I'll take a breath. Exhale. So you can get a little bit more out of it, trying to get these knees as separated as humanly possible. Okay, from there, I'm going to take this hand that was here, I'm going to rotate it over the top behind my body, and then while I do so, I'm going to keep trying to open up this hip even more, right? So I'm rotating, rotating, rotating the knee, right? But it's really coming from the hip. I'm trying to keep my, what was my front knee back, um, which is my front knee, trying to keep it on the floor as long as I can, which will now become my back knee as I transition through what's called bear sit. So once I can't get this leg any further, I'll start to bring my back leg off the ground, and I was slowly keeping both sit bones on the ground, coming to what's called bear sit. So this is my bear pose right here. So I can you know, train from here in future classes. So I'm sitting on the ground, I got my knees at about 90 degrees, gripping the shins, and I'm pulling myself actively taller into that position, right? So it's called bear sit. But for now, we can take those hands back behind us. Again, trying to really drive both knees to the floor as hard as I can. So I imagine my knees are allergic to each other. I'm trying to drive out, drive out, drive out. And then I will continue my transition to the other side. So I'm going to think this front knee is now driving to the floor. It's pulling this back knee, right? So I don't want to let this happen here, right? I want to keep these knees separated as possible. Take my front knee closer, closer to the floor. Once I touch the floor with my front knee, I'll take this hand, which is my back hand here, take it right in between my legs. Knees are still as separated as possible. And I will slowly rotate that hip and then knee to the floor. Okay, so now I'm at 90, 90 on the other side. You need to adjust and change the position at all. That's totally okay. 90 degrees in the front leg, 90 degrees in the back leg. I'm finding that stretch position. Not only in extra rotation, but now I'm going to rotate my hip, right? Internal rotation back out. Five reps here. So I'm rotating the pelvis over a fixed femur so that pulls us deeper into internal rotation. Back down. So again, this is a great warm-up for what we're going to do for the hip, but it also allows us to get familiar with what internal rotation stretch actually feels. Right? So we can rotate down, rotate down. Okay. So from here, I'll take my hand behind me, find the best position that allows me to get the stretch through the hip here and do the hip on the other side, but it's not going to do damage to the knee here, right? So I'm trying to open that chest, I'm going to get a good line of energy as I rotate the pelvis closer to the floor. We're going to hang out here for two minutes. Okay, we've already been in there for about 15 seconds, but we're just going to keep trying to rotate, rotate, rotate closer to the floor with that back hip. Keep the knee on the floor, ankle on the floor, as we breathe, four second inhale, eight second exhale. Each exhale, right, as we 
Try to rotate deeper into that stretch position. Let's go for another minute, 10. Okay, so again, just quick review. Our pails, our progressive angle, is driving our foot and ankle into the floor, right? So we're trying to increase the angle between our torso and our hip, right? And because we're on the floor here, you're not gonna be able to actually go anywhere. It's all about the intent. It's all about driving that foot into the floor. Our rails, we're driving, we're driving the knee into the floor and we're trying to lift that foot, right? So we're regressing the angle between our foot and our torso as we pull ourselves deeper into internal rotation. So the rails is kind of where more cramping kind of feelings start to happen if I was good on this hip here, especially if you're new to this, especially if you've never done before, that's okay, right? So cramping really comes down to what we call neurological confusion. So really that just means that your body is not familiar with position, it's not familiar with contracting from that deep end range of the joint, which is in a way kind of what we're going for, right? We're trying to increase our motion, we're trying to increase body awareness and strength that we previously didn't have, right? So we think 15 seconds here, get deep into that stretch as you can, Knee stays on the ground. Pull yourself deeper into that stretch as much as you can, trying to rotate your sit bone towards the floor, okay? Take a breath in. Pack the air down, start to drive that foot and ankle into the floor. Drive them down, we're building up, we're about 50%, 60%, good, 80. Let's go max effort, 100%, drive that foot and ankle into the floor as hard as you possibly can. Give it your all, this is our last thing we got here for this hip. Good, five, four, three, two, one and now rail. So if you're kneeing the floor, try to lift that foot, make it cramp, drive that foot higher into the sky. It's not gonna be able to go anywhere to the grand range. Give it everything you got. Make that hip cramp, drive that knee to the floor, lift that foot. Three, two, one, and relax. You can start rotating a little bit more. Get some life back into that hip there. Rotate open, rotate close. Okay, so we're gonna do our passive range liftoffs for internal rotations. But we're lifting that foot into the sky while we drive the knee down into the floor. Okay, so again, we're gonna do five liftoffs with a five second hold at each liftoff, okay? So find where you gotta be. Right and left hip may be different. So this position may have been good for your front hip or your first hip. You may need to lean out more to the side, you may need to lean farther forward. I know for me, my right hip does not like to internally rotate as much as my left. So I need to get a little bit farther forward and then lean out a little bit more to the side. Okay, it's all about finding where you gotta be to get that foot about four to six inches off the floor. Okay, so big brace that core, nice and tight. Lift that foot and hold. Three, two, one, and back down. That's one. Okay, find a position, that was a good test rep. And lift, five, four, three, two, one, and down, that's two. Nice, brace that core, lock the torso in place, and lift, five, four, three, two, one, back down, that's three, we got two more there, give it your all, press the knee in the ground, lift that foot, and hold, five, four, three, two, one, four, last one, give it a good hold, keep trying to fight for more increased range, and you drive that foot high in the sky, and lift, five, four, Three, two, one, and control back down slow. Very nice. That was our pails and rails, and then passive range liftoffs for hip internal rotation. Okay, so the last thing we got here is what's called capsule cars. So, our capsule cars is really kind of the ownership of external internal rotation that we just trained for our pails and rails and our passive range hold and passive range liftoffs. Right, so capsule cars really kind of helps think of it as like a way to save your work, maybe gain kind of some more control, some more understanding of the range of motions we just trained, because inevitably you will have more after you just expand the range of motion a little bit. But what we really want to do is kind of teach the nervous system to use that range of motion, right? Just because we trained it once, it's not mean you're going to have it the rest of your life. So we want to kind of help save that work by putting in positions to actually use what we just did, right? So we're going to lay on our back. So we'll start with our right hip. You're gonna lay on your back. Bottom, your left leg will be straight. Right leg will come up into 90 degrees. Okay, so you have your arms on the floor. You can hold your leg in place. You put both hands on one knee. Really what we wanna to try to do is keep the hip at 90 degrees, somewhere close to that. And then we wanna train our internal external rotation by just controlling that motion. Okay, so you can have your hands here. That's mainly just to keep them in place, not to actually 
control it with our arms. Okay, so we're gonna do this called extra rotation first. We're gonna do five reps, about three to five seconds hold. Okay, so we're gonna go from extra rotation, so we're gonna put foot rotates in while femur rotates out. We're gonna fight with more range. I think I'm trying to pull my right heel towards my left shoulder. And we're going to internal rotation. So now I'm gonna take my foot out, right heel towards my right shoulder. So I'm gonna hold for about three seconds. Find your end, fight for more. That's one, we're gonna do five reps. External rotation, right heel to right sh or left shoulder. And then internal rotation, right heel, right shoulder. Drive out, fight for more, fight for more, fight for more. That's two. We got three more there. Okay, find your end, rotate, fight for more. Internal rotation, rotate out, fight for more. Try to get more as we rotate. That is three. If you need to, you can use the hand, you can just guide the leg as we rotate. External rotation, foot rotates in, femur rotates out, internal rotation, foot rotates out, femur rotates in, find your end, fight for more. Let's do one more here. Get as much as you can out of it. Squeeze every last bit, extra rotation. And back to the center, last one. Internal rotation, foot rotates out. Squeeze, find your end, fight for more. Okay, so just a different view would be here, right? So I want the external rotation, internal rotation. Okay, switch the left hip. The last thing we got, and we're done for the day. So find your position, right leg straight, left leg is at 90 degrees. 90 degree bend of the hip, or of the hip, 90 degree bend of the knee. Okay, so I'm going to do extra rotation, left heel to the right shoulder, find your end, back more. Good, back to the center, internal rotation, rotate out, find your end, back more. That's one, four more there, rotate, squeeze, back to the center, left hip rotates, internal rotation, two. Three more here. Foot rotates. Good. Internal rotation. Foot rotates out. Find your end. Try to squeeze your feel on that hip here. That's three. Last two. So you can take arms on the floor. You can hold here. You can hold here. Whatever helps you. Rotate that foot. Find your end. Find more range. Good. Foot rotates out. Find your end. Find more. That's four. Last one here, get everything you got, squeeze every little last drop out of it. Extra rotation, left heel, right shoulder, squeeze. Back to the center, internal rotation, left heel, the left shoulder. Find your end, try to fight more, 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 more. And relax, come down, shake it out. That is it for class today. If you'd like to do some more hip cars, do some more shoulder cars, like I said in the beginning of class, there's really no upper limit to what you can do, right? So you can do them in the morning, you can do them before you train, after you train, really any time that you have a free moment, because the more rotation you can get, especially with hips and shoulders, the better, right? So especially people that have a lot of upper trap tightness, doing your neck cars throughout the day, you get a life, life changer, lifesaver. Um, and really, it's really, the more you do it, the better, okay? So thank you for joining me in class today. That was our hip kind of introduction. Next class will be focusing on the shoulders and we'll just kind of be continuing to build out ownership of our body, improve range of motion, improve active control of that range of motion, and improve overall joint health. So thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you at the next class. Thank you.